online on this beautiful day. We continue in the Pentecost season and now looking on towards Advent. As the holidays approach, we're getting busier here at the church. And to start with, just a few of the things that will be happening uh, here over the next couple weeks, if you want to turn to your calendars in the bulletin. Um, this afternoon, the anniversary committee is meeting at 3 o'clock. Next Sunday is Praise and Thanksgiving. There were three wild turkeys outside our <laughs> library door this morning. You just must have been looking for that. Uh, but we're not having a dinner this year. Um, we will have a video message from Conference Minister Carrie Call, and we'll be collecting for the backpack program, and the list of things that are needed for donations is in the bulletin. Uh, two weeks, November 27th, is the Koinonia Thanksgiving service here, the community service, at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, the preacher will be Reverend Michael Jarrett from the um, uh, Hunter Station Church, Emmanuel Lutheran. And the um, soloist, the special music, will be provided by Reverend Chorus Hagen from St. Peter Church down the road. Of course, we all know she really has that gift of a really beautiful voice. Um, so um, it should be a really nice service, and I hope some of you will want to come out and participate. Okay, we also have an announcement about the... Um, the shoe collection for the Willard family. Um, that had been closed, but the um, truck has not been here yet to pick up the shoes. So we, you can still bring donations for them to the church this week. And um, your, your extra donations will be appreciated. We didn't collect quite as many shoes. We have a nice collection of shoes, but we're, we were still hoping to get a few more. Uh, the seafarer bags, 26 were taken to the Synod office this week. So. Thank you to everyone who participated in that project. And of course, the Christmas Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes, they are due next Sunday. And anyone who wants to donate for the shipping costs for the boxes, please put your money uh, into the box on the table or give it to Arletta. Okay, any other announcements before we turn to the um, uh, the prayer list and also the uh, recognition of our veterans. Okay, well, we were adding some persons to the prayer list. Uh, Jim Kiefer, who is back in the hospital at Evangelical. Vivian Engel, uh, Sandy Wentz's sister. And then we also have um, several persons who have been diagnosed with COVID. Uh, two of them are family members of mine. Now, blessedly, none of these three persons uh, does have a bad case of it. And the one is Leon Latshaw. Apparently, the uh, virus did get into that wing and personal care at um, Buffalo Valley, where she now resides. And then my cousin, Elaine Mumaw, and her husband, Abe, and they have no idea you know, how they might have contracted it. Um, but we will be praying for all of them that they might um, not have any lingering effects from what appears to be mild illnesses of, of the coronavirus. And we're also adding to the prayers uh, everyone who helped with the shoe boxes and the child who will receive the box that you prepared. And that is um, a request from Operation Christmas Child that all of the churches that are participating in the program kind of lift up the shoe boxes in prayer during this month, and we will plan to do that here. Anyone else to add to the prayer list? Okay, well, then we all know that Wednesday is Veterans Day. So do we have any veterans in attendance here today? Let's see a show of hands. Okay, David Kaler, anyone else? Okay, Maynard? Well, let's have both of you or anyone else whose hand I didn't see stand up, please. We would like to recognize you for your service to our country. And let's have some applause for these two who served. Okay. And I would invite everyone at this time now to continue to prepare for worship by listening to the prelude.
At this time, please stand if you are able for our morning confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in Amos chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. It's found in the Old Testament of the Pew Bible on page 995. How terrible it will be for you who long for the day of the Lord. What good will that day do you? For you it will be a day of darkness and not of light. It will be like a man who runs from a lion and meets a bear. Or like a man who comes home and puts his hand on the wall only to be bitten by a snake. The day of the Lord will bring darkness and not light. It will be a day of gloom without any brightness. The Lord says, I hate your religious festivals. I cannot stand them. When you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. I will not accept the animals you have fattened to bring me as offerings. Stop your noisy songs. I do not want to listen to your harps. Instead, let justice flow like a stream and righteousness like a river that never goes dry. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly. Psalm 70 is printed in the bulletin and on the screens. Save me, O God. Lord, help me now. May those who make fun of me be dismayed by their defeat. May all who come to you be glad and joyful. May all who are thankful for your salvation always say, How great is God! I am weak and poor. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my Savior and my Lord. Hurry to my aid.
second lesson is written in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. It's found in the New Testament of the Pew Bible on pages 277 and 278. Our brothers, we want you to know the truth about those who have died, so that you will not be sad as are those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus the those who have died believing in him. What we are teaching you now what we are what we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive when the day of the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be a shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of the God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then, we who are living at that time will be gathered up, uh, gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Please stand once more, if you are able, for the reading of this morning's Gospel from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Jesus speaks a parable. On that day, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten girls who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil with their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the girls began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten girls woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered back, There is not enough for you and us. Go to the store and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish girls went off to buy some oil, and while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five girls who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was closed. Later, the other girls arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried. But I really don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, watch out then, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord on this day. Please be seated. Okay, well, how many of us are glad the election is over? Show of hands? <laughs> okay, I would say that's a majority of our congregation. Um, I, I certainly was really glad myself. Uh, this election was um, stressful. It was billed as a, a test of the experiment in democracy our country embarked upon over 200 years ago. And for the first time in my life, I was really almost afraid to go to the polls. Sorry about that. Uh, but everything worked out fine. I'm having trouble with my um, uh, mic here this morning, but everything worked out fine on Tuesday. Uh, everything was very peaceful. Everybody got to vote. In fact, they said this election turned out a higher percentage of voters than anyone really in over a century. But we still can't quite breathe a sigh of relief that it's all over. Is it all over? There remain strong feelings on both sides of a deep divide in our country. There is the danger that this election will inflame those divisions, perhaps leaving in its wake hurt feelings and grudges even that may persist for the next generation or so. So we continue to live with a sense of uneasiness, you know, that 
all is not quite well within our world, we may feel safe here and within our own communities, but there is a certain sense of perhaps a danger out there in the world, a danger that really is real. Well, as Christians, we always turn to God's word for comfort, for solace, for guidance. And so today we have this gospel, the parable of the wise and the foolish bridesmaids, about this group of women, we all know the story, who are waiting with excitement and, and anticipation, but the bridegroom for whom they wait is delayed, and they all fall asleep. And as the night wears on, they awaken, he's about to arrive, but some no longer have sufficient oil to keep their lamps burning. And so they ask for the others who have extra supplies to share. But that doesn't work out for them. The ones who have the extra don't want to share. They suggest that those with insufficient supplies you know, go elsewhere and find some more oil. For their lamps and so they leave and the bridegroom arrives in their absence the wedding banquet begins everyone enters and when these foolish women re return now with oil for their lamps but they find everyone inside the the wedding banquet hall and the bridegroom now refuses them entry so they are left out in the night in the cold. Now, one of the things we can take from this parable is that judgment is the prerogative of the bridegroom. And we understand the bridegroom to stand in the place of God. So, it is God who judges us. We have no duty or responsibility or even right to assess the worthiness of one another. When we do judge each other, we are appropriating to ourselves responsibility that properly belongs to God. Now, we do think of the wise bridesmaids, I think when we read this, as the ones who are deserving of their admission to the banquet, and the foolish bridesmaids as the ones who are undeserving of admission. But when we actually think about it, really you know, neither group of women behaves in a way that is entirely admirable. For the foolish ones, of course, we know they have not properly prepared for the circumstance that the bridegroom might be delayed. And the wise ones have failed to be generous, refusing to share with the ones in need of extra oil, just being very self-protective and fearing for what might happen to them if they were so generous as to share. You know, we actually could almost make the argument that these women who refused to share really perhaps committed the greater sin than those who simply forgot to bring extra measures of oil. And yet, it is not up to us to judge that worth of one another. The parable does not tell us why the Lord, why the, the groom would not admit these foolish women to the banquet, but we can look at other passages in the Gospel of Matthew, perhaps to get a clue. Those other passages ask us to walk the way of Jesus, to live in accord with all of his teachings, and we can look to our Old Testament lesson for today uh, from Amos, the prophet, which lifts up the justice and righteousness as characteristics of the faithful community. Well, the yardstick by which God judges us really is a pretty high bar, and perhaps these foolish women who were refused the admission, perhaps they did not measure up as well as the wise ones in the parable. But really then, who among us really can, can measure up, can come even close? And who among us 
can say we have upheld righteousness in all that we have done, each action we have taken. Let's be honest. You know, we do fall short, and we rely on Christ to cover our sins. Because when Jesus tells this parable, it is before he has made that long and painful journey to the cross. And we now, on this side of his death and resurrection, we throw ourselves upon the mercy of our God, shown in the sacrifice Christ made for each of us to cover our sins, to to give us, make us righteous in God's sight, to, to be assured that we are beloved children of God, part of God's beloved community. Jesus died for each of us and for all of us. Though unworthy, we do have a place in God's kingdom, and although divided across political lines, divided in all kinds of ways, all of us are children of God. The divisions in our country may run deeper than political lines, but we need to look across that divide, across that gulf of a gap, and recognize there are indeed children of God on the other side. As Professor David Lowe takes note, once we start drawing lines between, well, who's in and who's out, especially in God's community, well, Jesus always shows up on the other side of the line we have drawn. We sin when we take upon ourselves God's place to say who is worthy of inclusion in God's kingdom, in the fellowship of God's kingdom here on earth. And so, let us go on with our lives with confidence that we are God's children. God's blessing rests upon each and every one of us who are here today. And what a comforting and empowering thought that is. And likewise, God's blessing rests upon all of those who are on the other side of that sharp line of division through our nation, be they members of our own families, colleagues at work, neighbors, or even strangers. May we, as citizens of our great nation, recover our sense of being one people, under God, yes, disagreeing with one another, maybe sharply disagreeing with one another about many things, but united in a common purpose. May we, as individuals, endeavor to bridge the troubled waters of the great divide in our nation, beginning with our own families, our own communities, as lines of communication need to remain open. We need to value one another as God's beloved children. After all, it is not up to us to determine who is worthy of inclusion in God's kingdom. Amen.
stand once more if you are able. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. And now we confess the faith that does bring God's presence to each of us and affirm that we, each of us, is a very worthy child of God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song, sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Your mercy is great, O God. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Your mercy is great, O God. O holy God, we pray that you might be with all, observing Veterans Day, guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel, comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty, Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Your mercy is great, O oh God. O oh holy God, console all who feel lonely or abandoned in this time. Share the hours of those who live alone. Comfort those who have few friends who struggle to find their place in this world. Be with all of those who have special need for your healing hand to rest upon them through the, these days. And we know there are those within our own community who have special need of your presence at this time. We pray that you might be present with Jim, that you might be present with Vivian, that you might be present with Leon, with Abe, with Elaine. Comfort them with the knowledge of your presence and the assurance that your healing hand is upon them, guiding them towards restoration to, of health and hope. And, O oh God, we thank you for all who participated in the Shoebox Project, and we pray that you might bless their works, that you will bless the journey that each box might find its way to a child in need who will have special need for what is in that box. And we pray that your love might be shared through this very special project and through the, the service of all of us. And we know that there are needs that are, we are aware of that we would like to place before you now. And we name those persons in need or those other things for which we would like you, your face to to shine upon, to bring healing and hope. Now, saying these names on our lips and in our hearts.
Receive all of our prayers, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, while you are, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. 